What if I told you that within our lifetime we could crack the code on aging and potentially live to the age of 150, 200 and even 300? In 2004, Aubrey de Grey coined the term longevity escape velocity. What it basically means is that medicine could advance so fast that for every year you survive, science adds two more years to your lifespan, resulting in people living hundreds of years, possibly forever. The therapies will be improving faster than the remaining imperfections in the therapies are catching up with us. This is a very important point for me to get across because, you know, most people, when they hear that I predict that, people are, that a lot of people alive today are going to live to, f to a thousand or more, they think that I'm saying that we're going to invent therapies in the next few decades that are so thoroughly uh, eliminating aging that those therapies will let us live to a thousand or more. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that the rate of improvement of those therapies will be enough. They'll never be perfect, but we'll be able to fix the things that 200-year-olds die of before we have any 200-year-olds, and the same for 3 and 400 and so on. Aubrey predicts a 50% chance that we will reach the longevity escape velocity by 2036. That's just 10 years from now. But here's the problem. Despite the hype, we haven't seen any truly breakthroughs in anti-aging science, as the longest life extension in animals was achieved 40 years ago with just calorie restriction. At the same time, AI and biotech are moving at an immense speed. So the big question is, are we on the brink of a hockey stick moment for longevity, or are we just fooling ourselves? Now, I personally think that 2036 is a bit too early for us to reach longevity escape velocity, but 2045 might be possible. That's just 20 years from now. And I think the likelihood is something like 5 to 10%, which is not massive, but it's greater than zero. So in this video, I'm going to give you a plan to give yourself the best shot at reaching the longevity escape velocity or at the very least, dramatically increase your lifespan. Because the truth is, we will be seeing people living longer in the future. Even if we're not going to reach the age of 200 or 300, there's going to be more and more people who will reach the age of 100, 110, 120, thanks to the advancements in medicine. The first and most obvious thing to do is to just stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible, which unfortunately a lot of people aren't doing. Eat mostly whole, minimally processed foods. Exercise moderately a few times a week and vigorously also a few times a week. Sleep 7-8 to eight hours like your life depends on it, because it does. Don't be overweight and maintain a leaner body composition. Protect your mind, avoid chronic stress and make time to actually relax. I'm not going to go into the exact details of a healthy lifestyle because I have plenty of other videos you can watch. The real question is, where are you right now? Are you in poor health, average health or in excellent health? Because the healthier you are today, the higher your likelihood of surviving until 2045 or even the year of 2100. Most people sit in the average zone and average health is a coin flip when it comes to longevity. You have some people who are very unhealthy and some people who are healthier than average. Our goal would be to get us into at least the top 15% of health because that's where your survival odds start to skyrocket. You don't need to be in top 1% of health but top 10% or top 5% would mean that you're in an excellent spot to live a very long and healthy life. If you want to know where you stand with your health right now, then I'm offering you a free analysis of your current health status. You just need to answer six short questions. If you're interested, then email me the word review to info at and I'll give you your personal health assessment. You also want to minimize risky behaviors that could kill you instantly. The stats are brutal. The biggest causes of accidental deaths involve traffic accidents, drug overdose, gun violence, and falls. Younger people are more likely to die to drug overdose and traffic accidents, whereas older people die to falling off the stairs. Here's the kicker. You only need one accident to erase decades of healthy living. One time without a seatbelt, one time without a helmet, one overdose, basically you should never do any drugs, even gambling can lead you to a dark path. Take motorcycling, for example. It's fun, yes, but motorcyclists are 24 times more likely to die and four times more likely to be injured than people in cars. If you can't give up motorcycling, at least stack the odds in your favor. Wear the helmet, ditch the speeding, skip the risky corners and crazy overtakes and never drive while drunk. You should also minimize risky behavior when it comes to experimental medical procedures. These things have become quite popular over the last few years and they will become increasingly more popular over the next few decades. As of 2025, it mostly applies to gene therapy and gene editing. At the moment, we have no evidence that any of them work. Why would you spend like $25,000 to $50,000 on experimental gene therapy at some shady offshore island that doesn't have to be accountable for any of the side effects? At the safest case scenario, you're just getting injected with saline water. And at the worst case scenario, you might have some serious infections or side effects and it might even shorten your lifespan. We don't know. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against the idea of gene editing because the truth is gene editing is one of those things that will make humans live over the age of 120. You're not going to live to the age of 200 by just exercising and eating a healthy diet. You need something more dramatic. It's just that right now, we don't know if gene editing works and how effective it is, or if we're modifying the right genes, etc. So we just need to wait a few decades until we get more science about this and make the gene therapies we do have more effective. If you're 80 years old, you might decide that it's worth to take the risk because you're already at the tail end of your life and you have less to lose, frankly. But if you're younger than 60, the smart move is to wait. In 10 to 20 years, these treatments will almost certainly be safer, more effective and far less of a gamble. Now let's get to the juicy stuff, the drugs and supplements that could extend human lifespan. Rapamycin is the one that gets the most attention, and to be honest, it's the most likely candidate to extend human lifespan by at least a few years. Rapamycin has been consistently been shown to extend lifespan in animals, equal to calorie restriction, which is the most potent thing to see in extend lifespan. I'm personally not taking rapamycin right now because I'm too young and I can afford to wait even 20 years. There is currently a fascinating clinical trial led by Dr. Matt Caberlain looking at the effects of rapamycin on companion dogs. When the results of this study come out in a few years, I'll be able to decide whether or not I'll start giving my own dog rapamycin and whether or not I'll start taking it myself. But again, if you're 80 years old, you just don't have the time to wait and you may want to hurry up with your decision. Because there's even studies on mice given rapamycin at the end of their life and the females live 14% longer and males 9%. The second popular longevity drug is metformin, but metformin hasn't been seen to extend lifespan in genetically diverse mice. Metformin probably has some health benefits by lowering blood sugar levels, and with age you see a worsening of your metabolic health and blood sugar levels, but you shouldn't think of metformin as a miracle longevity pill. There are other diabetes drugs like acarbos and canaglithosin that have been seen to extend lifespan in mice, and canaglithosin use is also associated with reduced mortality in humans, so it's worthwhile to keep your eye on these two drugs. What I'm really interested in are GLP-1-like peptides for longevity. Right now they're being used for weight loss and diabetes, but with the same technology we can probably create similar drugs that work for aging. It'll probably take another 10 years, but these GLP-1s for longevity are coming, because the technology is already extremely effective. On the supplement side, most supplements aren't that effective for life extension, but a few stand out, as the xanthin, taurine and glycine. They've been seen to extend lifespan in animal studies. I've made videos about the supplements seen to extend lifespan in mice and the pharmaceuticals that appear to reduce mortality risk in humans. You can find the links in the description. With age, you see a decline in many aspects of health. Muscle strength, muscle mass, cognition, bone density, and social capital. The good news is that you can slow this decline by building reserves when you're younger. Think of it like a savings account for your body and brain. The more you put in now, the more you can draw on later. Take your brain. It's seen that people with higher cognitive reserve do better with neurodegeneration and dementia later in life. To increase your cognitive reserve, you need to educate yourself, keep learning and problem solving throughout your life, as well as spark novelty in your daily routine. Your muscles and bones are the same story. People with more muscle and strength have a lower risk of dying to anything later in life. People with higher bone density have lower rates of hip fractures and they're less likely to die to falls. To increase bone density and strength, you need to do resistance training already when you're young. And then there's social capital. People with stronger social relationships have higher life satisfaction and happiness. For that, build the relationships you have and cherish them. The number one killer on earth isn't cancer or Alzheimer's, it's heart disease. Up to 33% of people will die to some form of cardiovascular disease. Here's why it matters for longevity. Heart disease is the bottleneck in most people's longevity as the average age of a heart attack is 65. If you die at the age of 65, you're not going to reach the age of 80 or 100. It's game over. If you were to eliminate heart disease from your death bingo card, you're expected to immediately live about 5 to 10 years longer. The scary part is that the first sign of heart disease in most cases is the heart attack itself. And by then, your survival odds are basically 50-50. But the disease itself didn't start 5 or even 10 years ago. It already started when you were young. Heart disease progresses silently over decades. So how do you minimize your risk of heart disease? Live a healthy lifestyle. Yes, diet, exercise, sleep, the basics. And don't follow some experimental diet. You can't go wrong with a Mediterranean style diet. Track your blood work regularly so you can catch problems early. Avoid any major red flags like high inflammation, high blood sugar, high blood pressure and high lipids. If you're over 50, consider a CT scan to check your arteries as it can show if there is plaque and how advanced it is. And lastly, adjust your habits based on what the data tells you. 
the earlier you start, the less likely it is that heart disease will kill you, and the better your odds of reaching triple digit lifespan. We should also talk about your environment. Similar to minimizing risky behavior, you want to minimize risky environments. Even if you live in an unhealthy environment in terms of air pollution, you can make your own home a sanctuary that's improving your health. If you can choose, live in a less polluted area. Keep your indoor air and water quality clean because you breathe and drink more than anything else in life. Have house plants to clean indoor air. Check for house mold, especially in water damaged buildings. It's a silent health killer. Consider a kill switch for your stove or other flammable appliances when you leave the house. Fires don't care about your longevity goals. And don't have a sharp medieval sword hanging from the ceiling over your bed, like the sword of Damocles, because it might fall down and cut off your head. You get what I mean. When it comes to organic food, then here's a simple rule. Worry about the skins that you eat. Some pesticides have a link to higher risk of cancer and neurodegeneration. If you peel it, like a banana, you're fine. If you eat the skin, like strawberries, organic is the safer bet. Like I said in the beginning, I think there's like a 5% likelihood that we will reach the longevity escape velocity by the year 2045. I'm gonna be 50 years old by that time, which is not very old. It might also be that it's gonna happen later, like 2075, when I'm gonna be 80 years old. But it doesn't really matter. It can happen in 2045, 2055, 2095, or never. By staying healthier for longer right now, you're expected to reap the benefits in greater life extension in the coming few decades. Because even if we don't solve aging and live to the age of 300, we can still make more people live over the age of 100 and 120. If you're serious about stacking the odds in your favor and slowing down your aging, join me inside the Youth Spend Society, my school community, where we dive deeper into longevity science, share routines, and keep each other accountable. Link in the description.